Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Gotrej Properties Limited's earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anu Pujari of CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Goldfish Properties Q1 FI23 results conference call. We have with us Mr. Firosha Goldfish, Executive Chairman, Mr. Mohit Malotra, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Rajendra Ketavas, CFO of the company. We would like to begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for an interactive question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call will be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. I would now request Firosha to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Godrich Properties' first quarter financial year 23 conference call. I'll begin by discussing the highlights of the quarter, and we then look forward to taking your questions and suggestions. I'm happy to report that Godrich Properties uh, started the year with its highest ever first quarter sales. We sold 2,300 homes during the quarter with an area of about 2.8 million square feet, and in value terms sold about 2,520 crore worth of inventory, which represented a year-on-year -year value growth of 407%. Of course, the base was the uh, uh, Delta wave last year, so it's not really a, um, a reasonable base to look at. We were especially pleased to have crossed 1,000 crore of sales in Mumbai through the successful launch of two new projects, Godridge Horizon, wherein we sold more than 500 crore of real estate, and Godridge Ascend in Thane, where we sold 379 homes with a booking value of about 415 crore. We believe this puts us on track to our objective of achieving sales in excess of 10,000 crore in the current financial year. On the operations front, while we had no deliveries in the first quarter, we remain on track to deliver a large number of projects during the rest of the year. As a result of no deliveries in, in the first quarter, our revenues were relatively muted at 375 crore, a year-on-year -year growth of 61%. Our adjusted EBITDA grew by 58% to 132 crore, while our net profit grew by 168% to 46 crore. Our residential collections for the quarter stood at 1,538 crore, leading to positive net operating cash flow. From a business development perspective, we recently added a new luxury project near Carmichael Road in Mumbai with a total saleable area of about 1.2 lakh square feet and an expected revenue potential of approximately 1,200 crore. While our new business development uh, announcements during the quarter were only these two or three projects, one in Carmichael Road, a plotted development project in Nagpur, and an addition, additional phase to our, one of our projects in Mumbai, we do have a very exciting set of projects under discussion, and our business development pipeline is exceptionally strong. Um, so we expect to have several new projects announcements in the months ahead. While commodity cost inflation has impact, impacted margins on under construction inventory, the price hikes taken to mitigate the same for new projects have been well absorbed. Strong housing demand despite price increases and interest rate hikes gives us confidence that the housing cycle upturn is sustainable. We remain confident of leveraging the opportunity to grow our market share aggressively with a sharp focus on business development and project execution, which will set us up for significant earnings growth in the years ahead. I would also like to update you on an important change to our leadership team that will take effect from January 1st, 2023. Mohit, our Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, has tendered his resignation from the company to seek entrepreneurial opportunities outside Godrich Properties. I'm deeply grateful to Mohit for the essential role he has played in transforming Godrich Properties over the past 12 years he's been with the company and over the past five and a half years that he's been CEO. I wish Mohit much success for the future and for his new venture. Gaurav Pandey, who is currently the Chief Executive Officer of the North Zone of Goodrich Properties, will take over from Mohit as Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, effective January 1st. Gaurav has over 17 years of experience in the real estate sector, and as CEO of, no of our North Zone, he has transformed the P&L of the business and built a high-performing team. In the five years of his leadership, the zone grew by six times in booking value, four times in collections, 
and the imputed return on capital employed increased very significantly to about 27%. In fiscal year 2022, the profit after tax for the North Zone was the largest contributor to Gozich Properties P&L. So I'm quite confident that Gaurav's uh, thorough knowledge of the industry, the company, um, and his, delivered, his delivery track record will help ensure he has a very successful tenure as CEO of Gorgeous Properties. On that note, I conclude my remarks. I'd like to thank you all for joining us on the call. We'd now be very happy to discuss any questions, comments, or suggestions you may have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, you may enter star and one. We have the first question from the line of Kunal Lakhan from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good evening. Um, Firstly, on the operating cash flows, uh, you know, it was quite low this quarter. I mean, although it was positive, but uh, you know, as a percentage of collections, it was a bit a bit lower. Uh, what what is the what is the reason for that? So Kunal, you know, so obviously, you know, the collections will improve in the coming quarters. You know, since it's the beginning of the quarter, there are a lot of you know construction milestone payments which is key, which will keep coming. Since the launches, also three launches we have done, those are initial you know collection which we have received. But going forward, you will see this collection and the operating cash flow trajectory improving in the coming quarter. I think Kunal, we remain very confident both of strong uh, overall collections as well as operating cash flow growth for the full year. We agree this quarter was was a little bit low. Sure, sure. Um, secondly, uh, on uh, on status of your uh, Ashok Vihar launch, uh, if you can give some indication on when the launch will be and uh, where are we in terms of approvals. Yeah, I think we've been making steady uh, progress on the approval. There are one or two issues that are still outstanding. So we're hoping for a Q3 launch on that. Q3, okay. Uh, okay. And lastly, uh, in terms of new launch, new launches for the rest of the year, right? I can see only one launch in, in the Mumbai market, uh, which is the Matumba launch. Uh, but besides that, uh, we don't have anything else lined up for uh, for the rest of the year. Well, we do have a few projects that, you know, we haven't put in the official guidance that we'd hope to launch by the end of the year, um, you know, including our Worley development, including uh, perhaps even this Carmichael Road development, if we can turn it around fast enough. Um, but you're, you're right that um, I, I think some of the, the, the Mumbai launches will be second half of next year as well. We have, of course, launched two significant projects in Q1. So we expect continued momentum and inventory sales from, from those projects. But more if you want to add anything? Yeah, as Sarosha highlighted, I think there are a couple of uh, projects which we are looking to launch. But, uh, you know, at our advanced stages of approval, we haven't taken them into our guidance. Uh, we also have potential to launch the phase, uh, the next phase launch for our Vadala project, which has done phenomenally well. So, uh, you know, uh, looking at quite exciting opportunities in Mumbai this year. Sure. And lastly, status on your Bandra project. Noise, you want to take that? Not much uh, progress on Bandra project. As you know, uh, you know, it's stuck because of our joint venture partners, uh, uh, you know, reasons. Uh, so I think that project where uh, things are going slower than what we would have liked it to. Okay, okay. I have a few questions. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. My first question is with respect to, you know, your investments in uh, joint ventures, and, and other financial assets that seem to have gone down on a Q on Q basis. Uh, can you elaborate on why that would have happened? 
ஜெய்விட்டிங்ஸ்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட்ரெக்ட
Hi, thank you so much. Uh, and best wishes to you, Mohit, for future. Uh, my first question is uh, on the uh, on the price increase, Pirosh. Uh, what's been the sequential increase uh, Q4 to Q1? Mohit, you want to take that? Sure. Uh, so uh, thanks, Amir, uh, first of all, your uh, good wishes. Uh, so we had, uh, as we mentioned in the last call, we took a you know almost five to six percent price hike in Q4. Uh, uh, to hedge for the inflation. This quarter again, you know, we have uh, taken a price hike of uh, three to four percent across projects. Now, some projects we have take, we have been able to take a higher number. Some projects we couldn't take as much as we would have liked. But on an average, uh, you know, quarter on quarter we have been targeting uh, four to five percent price hike uh, across markets. You know, markets like NCR, where prices are already going up significantly we could take a higher number. Uh, in some markets, which are still lagging behind, the, the number of price hikes is slightly lower. And, uh, sir, what's the outlook for balance nine months of this year? Yeah, I think uh, we have been, uh, you know, we have not seen any major, uh, you know, drop in demand uh, through these price hikes. So we would like to, you know, continuously push uh, in a prudent way uh, the the price hike, but of course we'll also also have to be very careful about you know how consumers are responding to it, and we don't want volumes to drop. So we'll just take it in a very cal uh, calibrated way, and uh, you know uh, accordingly decide. Very difficult to give a guidance on this. Okay, no, that's fine. And um, anything you can talk about the two new project acquisitions, uh, which is Carmichael and Nagpur, and the plotted development in Nagpur. Uh, what kind of gross margins uh, which, you know can we assume, which is backing out both land costs and construction costs? See, uh, Nagpur is a plotted development, so the margins in plotted developments are upwards of forty percent plus. Uh, so that is, uh, Rajendra, do you have exact margin for uh, Carmichael? I'm sorry. I'm so Carmichael. You know, uh, we should be, you know, uh, Samir, we've invested close to, uh, you know, uh, 300 crores. So that is the equivalent amount of profit which we are looking at over there. Okay. Now, that's that's great, uh, Rajan. But when you say invested 300, uh, that is only land or land plus uh, construction, you're saying? Only land. I'm saying on the land, we generally will we look to make 2x kind of a return. So that is, you know, that is the margin we look to. Uh, make from that kind of a project. Okay, uh, I mean just so that we are clear. So the sales potential is twelve hundred crores, and profit is three hundred. You are saying? Yeah, basically, I'm just saying that is a ballpark because there will be a lot of you know uh, construction, there will be a lot of approval and other stuff. You know, so I'm just saying this is a ballpark. Okay. So yeah, these are both nice. obviously some quite high margin projects. I think the Carmichael one is a ultra luxury project. The ultimate margin will of course depend on pricing, but it's a small project, so I think um, you know we we will go for a high, pretty high margins there. Okay. And the final question is, uh, how does uh, the site at Worley look like in terms of uh, is it how clear it is? You know. What? See, uh, the site is getting cleared. Uh, you know, the the work had already started, uh, and both the partners are already in the process of site vacation. Uh, but if you really ask, you know, I don't think you will see a very major change unless a significant number of people move out. So right now the progress is positive, but a real shift in site, uh, you know, you would see in the next six months. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. First of all, I like to congratulate Mohit uh, uh, for your journey. Uh, so my question is to uh, Pirod Shah. So last year, uh, Northern Market contributed about 40% to our team sales. In Bharav now, assuming uh, the role of the CEO. So are we looking to replace him uh, in North with someone else? Uh, how will we look at the Northern market now? Uh, if we can highlight, are we looking to deepen our presence there? Uh, because you have uh, emphasized a lot on the Northern market, its profitability and ROP of uh, almost 27%. So 
if you can just touch upon uh, the northern market, uh, how will it shape up now? Yes, I think we have continued to have strong ambitions uh, for that market. I think, of course, um, you know, we, we have a strong team in place there. We've actually appointed as um, Gaurav's successor our, our, an existing PNL leader in our uh, in NCR team who is number two to Gaurav, uh, Geetika, who's been one of our star performers and been a key part of the reason NCR has performed so well. So she will now take over as the PNL head for the NCR zone when Gaurav uh, moves over, and we, we continue to have uh, very ambitious plans for the growth in that zone. Uh, on the business development pipeline, so I mean, some of the peers do give a guidance on annual guidance on certain number on the, uh, on the business development. So do we have any number uh, for, especially for MMR, especially on the premium side, so where we don't have any significant presence as of now? So you've been highlighting in earlier calls that you're looking to significantly ramp up and increase our market share, but off late we've been seeing that other players from other geographies coming up and taking our market share, and we have been like not really done a great job out there. So if you can just touch upon, uh, if you can quantify some of that, top, especially on the premium reality. Yeah, I think in Mumbai, first of all, you know, as I, as I mentioned, we actually last quarter had our best ever sales probably in Mumbai, certainly since our big Vikroli launches where we've crossed a thousand crore in sales. Um, the project, one of the major contributor to that was actually a business development project we added last year in a redevelopment project in Wadala. So we're actually very happy that we've turned around that quite quickly. We've just announced this Carmichael Road project. As I did mention, there are a couple of very advanced stage large projects um, that we have in the pipeline. Of course, still we are in a place to announce them. I agree that there's no way that the investor community can really get a get great sense of them, but we hope to be able to provide that in the near term. You know, I think giving business development guidance, I would take with a pinch of salt because there are a large number of unknowns in this. But if, if you look at it, I'd say that, you know, the goal of the company is to do at least 10,000 crore bookings this year to grow at at least 20% um, year on year. And I think steady state, that means for two years forward, we should be at a sort of 15,000 crore number at least. Um, so I think that's the kind of booking value we'd like to lock in through business development in the in the current year, and we think we're on track to do that. Okay. But some of these large uh, opportunities, that typically, I mean, so what kind of more opportunity we are seeing emerging now on the business development front? Uh, so do you think it's more like greenfield or still like we're going to lock down uh, uh, to uh, SRA or redevelopment opportunities rather than right away like greenfield opportunities by buying out land from corporate? So, so on your plate, so what kind of opportunities are emerging from these segments? You know, I think we're seeing large opportunities in all of the above. I think from a balance sheet perspective, there are only a handful of developers in the country right now who have the capacity to cut large uh, land acquisition purchase checks. Um, so I think we are well-placed and with a gearing ratio of 0.1 is to 1 to be um, in place to do that for large significant opportunities. I think given the Godridge brand and our track record on doing probably more joint ventures than any other developer over the last five, six years. Six years, We feel very confident in being able to do new partnership projects as well. So I think you'll see a mix of those and also some redevelopment projects. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pavitra. And all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Abhinav Sinha from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, congratulations to um, Mohit on uh, uh, your move ahead. Uh, wishing you all the best. Uh, my first question is on uh, the growth uh, trajectory. So you have talked about uh, 10,000 crores of sales in the current year, but it's now only sort of implying you know, flat numbers in the next nine months. So w why is that so? I mean, uh, is it like a launch issue or you can do better? I think you know 10,000 crore obviously is a, is a we think pretty healthy number. It would imply annual growth of 27 uh, percent. Of course, the endeavor will be to always do even better, um, but I think that would be we think a pretty solid number for the year. So we want to first make sure we do uh, get to that number, and obviously, if the opportunity presents itself, we will we will go for a much larger number. Um, you know, I think we've been quite happy with the steady scale up we've been seeing. 
in, in the business from a booking value perspective. I think we're probably the only developer that's delivered consistent um, year-on-year growth each of the five, last five or six years. Um, and we want to continue to build on that. So I think 10,000 crore this year, if we can do a bit better, nothing like it. But I, again, I think a 27% growth for the year will be a healthy number. Sure. And uh, on uh, you know on the cash flow part, you mentioned you're expecting it to be better you know in the next nine months. Uh, so where where can we you know roughly expect the net debt to end the year? Uh, we had an uptick of close to 500 crores this year. Is that a fair pace to assume? Uh, you know, going forward? Yeah, I think more than operating cash flows, which I think will be strongly positive for the year, I think the bigger determinant of where we end the year from a net debt perspective will be scale of business development. So the hope would be to actually, you know, be investing even more than we have the last couple of quarters. But yes, I think at a minimum, we would we would expect the sort of uh, total net debt to go up by at least that if business development is firing the way we want to, but a few big deals could could make that uh, happen at a faster pace. Pirosha, well, the big deals that you talked about, uh, you know, uh, say the 5,000 crores out of bracket, these are land purchases or these are JVJDs? You know, the, the, again, we're, you know, there are a large number of uh, opportunities we're looking at. I think we're looking at, for example, one large joint venture uh, project and one large outright uh, purchase. The specific project that I said could be about a 5,000 crore revenue opportunity is an outright purchase. Okay. Uh, and see, uh, one question from the P&L perspective. Uh, so on the current year, which are the project deliveries, you know, if you can guide us for uh, that we can expect in the next uh, three watt quarter? I, I think we have a large number of project deliveries. Um, we, we expect you know, over 10 million square feet of deliveries this year. Um, I, I, so it'll be a long list of projects. Maybe Rajendra can take you through that offline. Sure, sure, I will, I will connect uh, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Girish Chaudhary from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, thank you. Um, okay, on the uh, Mr. Chaudhary, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, please could you use the handset? Uh, the audio is not clear. Yeah. Yeah. Is this better now? Sure. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, firstly, on the Bangalore market, um, so if you, if you look at the sales, uh, they have been pretty soft over the last year or two. So this quarter also, uh, the bookings were around 270 or crore. So, when do you expect a rebound in in, in performance uh, from this market? If you can give some concrete um, uh, launches planned or or BB in this market. Um, yeah, that's the first question. Yeah, I think we expect a, a fairly immediate rebound. We've also made some changes to the team there. We've got a new CEO there who's been on board for a couple of months, um, who I think is, has very aggressive plans for growth in the market. We're looking at some exciting large new opportunities, but we do have a few significant uh, new projects that we'll be launching from deals we added uh, last year. So I certainly think that um, you know we've we've taken cognizance of the low sales in Bangalore over the past 12 months and should should report a much higher number over this next uh, remainder of the financial year. Moet, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I concur with your view. I think uh, there's a very interesting pipeline we're building in Bangalore on BD side. So once that comes in, uh, you know we'll see a big turnaround in the Bangalore market. Uh, uh, so if I have to ask you this other way around, off the 10,000 crores guidance, how much can one expect from this market if you have in any number uh, in, in your mind? I think the, uh, this year the contribution from Bangalore will be relatively less, but I think next year onwards it should uh, you know significantly increase in contribution once the, these BD deals get signed. Okay, okay. And um, secondly, um, last two years, again, deliveries were around 6.5 million uh, square feet. Um, so around 6.4, 6.5 million square feet. So any target if you can share for FI2024 in terms of completion? As I mentioned, that, sorry, for this year or for next year, are you asking? Uh, 23 and 24, if you can share yeah. for uh, both. Yeah, I think this year we'll see a, a large uptick, certainly north of 10 million. I think a lot of it will depend exact, on the exact timings of OCs, but I, I think 10 million would be a, a base case number. 
um, and you, you should see a strong number the following year as well. We're currently selling over the last couple of years about 11 million uh, square feet a year, so within a couple of years that should in any case be the, the, the minimum rate. But as we scale up, obviously deliveries will keep pace. But I think over the next uh, couple of years, you'll see at least 25 million square feet of deliveries. Okay, got Thank you and uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Nimish Maheshwari from ISPN Ventures. Please go ahead. Congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, how do you expect the demand of, uh, uh, with respect to increase in interest rate scenario, like uh, in the across the year, one to one point five percent may increase. So, how do you see the demand? Honestly, I don't anticipate any major impact on demand. I think it's important to remember that the starting point for this increase was the lowest interest rates India has ever seen. Um, so even, you know, today a mortgage costs 7%, if that, say, goes to 8 or 8.5%, that would be relatively low by any historical standards. The last time the sector was booming in 2011-12, interest rates were, you know, 10-11%. Um, so I'm not overly concerned with this. Over obviously, we'll have to keep a close eye and, and watch how things move. But my sense is affordability for real estate while not quite as good as maybe a year or a year and a half ago, is still one of the best it's ever been because prices have, are still quite moderate if you consider that we went through an eight, nine year down cycle with very limited property price appreciation. So the 10% or so it may have seen appreciation over the last 12, 18 months is a relatively modest number in, in, um, in light of sort of the time correction and the kind of increases people have seen in their income over this 10 year period. Similarly, as I mentioned on interest rates, by, um, there is some increase over, over the recent past, but we're starting off from an extremely low base. So my sense is the Indian economy um, and positivity around its performance is much better than it's been in a long time. I think if that holds and if people's view is that um, inflation is likely to make property more expensive, which I think is correct, um, then you will have home buyers wanting to come into the market. I think sometimes the industry is as much about buyer's perception as it is about the underlying numbers. So, so my expectation is that we're still in the relatively early stage of what will be a lasting up cycle in the sector. Okay, thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. My first question is uh, on the ROCs of uh, different regions, like, like you have explained that over the last four or five years, uh, NCR, we have been able to get 27% kind of ROC. If you can talk similar numbers for the other regions, MMR, Pune, and Bangalore. No, do you want to take Yeah, I don't have the number uh, offhand, but uh, maybe we can touch after the call and uh, provide you this data. Rough range you have, sir? Uh, uh, honestly, don't, uh, I don't have this uh, number of, uh, but we can share it after the call. Uh, Rajendra, if you can just share it after the call. Sure, Mike. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, second question is on the, uh, the 10,000 crore booking target we have. Uh, if you can give rough split in terms of regions uh, which you think we can achieve. Yeah, I think, you know, Mohit was saying Bangalore might be of the four regions uh, contribute the lowest amount uh, to this this year. I think NCR and Mumbai and, and our, what we call our east-west zone, which is mostly Pune, but also Kolkata and Ahmedabad, will all contribute relatively large numbers. I think the exact split will depend on you know which which exact projects end up getting launched and how they how they perform but i think overall we we think uh, 10000 crore will require a, a strong performance from all our zones and i think we'll see good growth over last year in all four zones sure sir and uh, on the pune and bangalore market uh, so we have a very ambitious target for this year uh, although 
they weren't um, any big launches but uh, q2 are there any big launches or most of them are uh, meant for the uh, h2 only more to the question we have a, a big launch coming up in pune in q2 which is at the last stage of approval so that would be a very big launch uh, and uh, apart from that uh, you know the, the launch pipeline looks healthy uh, there is good launches in uh, uh, ncr which is planned bangalore also we have a, a big launch already underway so we we are i think uh, we are looking at a strong number for q2 also uh, sure sir final question is uh, on this uh, the cash we had raised we have talked about trying to deploy uh, most of it this uh, year itself so uh, if there a chance uh, some of it can happen in q2 also or it will be again uh, back ended in say q3 or q4 only the deal finalization yeah, i think you know we, we should have deals getting added every quarter so certainly some of them should be in q2 as well no, no i'm talking about the big ones because uh, you know, we have added uh, we have spent 300 crore uh, for uh, one of the projects but compared to the cash yes, we have some are at a stage where hopefully they can be announced in q2 but but you know <laughs> obviously the reason they've not yet been announced is that they're not ready so i think these things are not Uh, you know always completely predictable from a timing perspective but yes we'd hope on the next call to have some significant updates in place so uh, that is it from my side thank you thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of kunal lakhan from clse please go ahead yeah hi thanks for the follow up uh so again there's just dwelling on the on the bangalore uh, contributions i see last year also we didn't have much contributing from bangalore and uh, we also saw some cancellations in q3 um just just wanted to understand like how are we approaching this market because we've been in the market for for some time now uh any change in the strategy uh, or you know besides what we've been doing so far Yeah, I think we're we're very clear on what our expectations in Bangalore are, and that over the last 12 months we've missed them. I think in some years we've been in the top three players by booking value in Bangalore. Um, so I don't think that that we've not achieved any scale there. Um, we again, it's not, and also it's not an issue that any of the projects we've launched haven't done well. So I think it's a pure question of needing to uh, secure more business development, which we've already made some progress on over the past 12 months. and um have some very interesting opportunities that we hope to lock in over the next few months i also mentioned we we've, we've made a recent change in our leadership in in bangalore and the clear mandate to the team is to um you know make sure the scale moves up very considerably so we have um no concerns on the fact that that, that will happen we agree um you know we we haven't done as well as we could have uh, from a scale perspective in bangalore over the last 18 months and we are fully committed to ensuring that's rectified and very confident that it will be sure and and just a uh, just a data point that i must have missed in the past uh, the cancellations that we had seen in q3 of 100 or crores in bangalore this this was for which project this was a project godrej reflections which had a issue with this ngt order which we are in the process of appealing in the supreme court so for any customers who had wanted to withdraw from the project given the uncertainty we had we provided refunds sure sure thanks so much and all the best thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of through jain and himanshu saveri please go ahead yeah hi i just wanted to ask a question on the vikroli front is there anything uh, happening over there because it's been long time since uh, given uh, approvals problem or some other problem yeah no as we've mentioned in the past i think we'll we'll now announce it as and when something is ready to to launch her. there are a couple of parcels that are being worked on but there is a continued uh, uh, regulatory uncertainty of course a large part of the land uh, is still used for other purposes but the couple of pieces of um, land that we hope to launch soon will certainly uh you know announce as soon as we we are confident that it can be launched very quickly so the the same one which you have mentioned in the yes yes the deal right correct yeah 
and uh, any of the, uh, the Ashok VR one you said you are launching in the third quarter, right? Yes, again, obviously subject to all approvals being in place by then, but that's our current best estimate of the timing. I think the good news in Ashok VR is the NCR market has been really doing very well, both from a volume and pricing perspective. So while obviously we are frustrated with the delay and, and eagerly looking forward uh, to kicking off that project, from a pure financial returns perspective, I think the project um, only looks better now than it, than it did a year or two ago. So once we, whenever we get the approvals and all, you are pretty confident of uh, the project doing very well because of the NCR market, yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. I think one is the NCR market. Two, I think this is a very unique uh, land parcel and quality of location, the kind of scale of the land gives us an opportunity to create a, a very high quality product. So yes, I think this is um, certainly a big priority and extremely confident that when it kicks off, uh, we'll get off with a bang there. Okay, and the Hinjewadi one we are launching this quarter. Is there any chance? No. That's correct. That's the project which we mentioned is what we are looking to launch uh, in this quarter. And the Okla one also, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Manish Gandhi from KPMK Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on a great start and especially surprised by the numbers of Thane. So my first question will be uh, in NCR, after Ashok Vihar, uh, we don't have any uh, greenfield project uh, and we have done exceedingly well. But uh, given the current uh, land uh, price situation in NCR, so how do you look for the next two, three years? How do you build a land bank or uh, deals? Uh, so first question is on that. Yeah. So Manish, you know, our practice has never been to try to create large land banks, but to continue to do ongoing business development. In NCR, you know, we have that. We have some plotted projects. We have some remaining uh, phases of existing projects. Ashok Vihar itself is like a 8,000 crore plus booking value opportunity. So, you know, and of course, it is one of the focus markets for new capital deployment as well. So I think that combination, if we, you know, we've, of course, looking at this for the next couple of years, we're very confident of delivering strong growth in NCR on a, on a significant base. But obviously, for sustained long-term growth, I think we have to continue to fire from the BD side as well. Yeah, no, it's a wrong choice of word. It's not a land bank, but uh, I was just saying uh, on the BD because our aspiration to grow high and, and given the current... No, it's a fair uh, point, and it's certainly one of the markets where we're looking at some very interesting uh, opportunities. We've seen you know, almost anything we have launched there, including recently a uh, project in Sector 43 in Noida, which became our best-selling ever project in terms of a 12-month sale. So I think... Um, we are looking to add similar high-impact projects. And uh, do you see opportunities, Pirusha, or it is very difficult uh, to do BD right now in NCR? No, we are seeing opportunities. I think, you know, the, there will always, of course, be some level of competition. Um, I would say the opportunities actually remain considerable, though, while a lot of news goes on the, you know, five or six of us developers who are active in the market and are closing deals. I think there's still a long tail in the sector of liquidity issues and other problems. So, so we see, you know, decent opportunities to, to add um, significantly to the portfolio and are looking at some interesting things in NCR as well. Yeah, uh, that's wonderful. And uh, the last small one, uh, any updates on uh, Taluja? Uh, it's a big uh, project, 7.5 million. But uh, so, are we seeing to uh, getting approvals for next year or something like that? No. Yeah, there is some. Uh, you know, there is a critical CP which is pending in Taluja, which is uh, you know the road access which we are working on with JVP. So unless that is done, you know, we don't want to launch the project because that is a critical thing from a, a sales and marketing perspective. Right. Uh, but do you expect to solve that problem uh, in next year? or? Just... Yeah, I think uh, the work is on, but, uh, you know, acquiring land 
uh, is not easy. So difficult to give a guidance, uh, Manish. Thank you on this okay. one. No, 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 no worries. And uh, Mohit, uh, all the best for your journey, and thank you so much. You have added a great value to the Godrej properties, and uh, we would miss you definitely. And all the best. Thank you, thank you Manish. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ankit Patel from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening uh, to everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so my question is around the debt, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, the borrowing per piece uh, for the company right now. Uh, so I, what we can see is around 5,000 crore of gross debt and uh, around uh, 4,500 odd crore of cash. Uh, could you throw some light in terms of how the borrowing program as you uh, scale up now in terms of more fund deployment, uh, say 500 crores uh, of run rate every quarter, you know, how do you plan to uh, you know, space out the borrowings uh, between uh, different instruments uh, and, and how, do you, how do you look at, uh, at the borrowing side? Yeah, yeah sure. So, so the borrowing, you know, so like we have borrowing across, you know, uh, various instruments like NCD, uh, you know, CP, commercial papers, bank borrowings, you know. So these are the, you know, borrowing instruments we and borrowing program we keep running. So just to give you a perspective, you know, uh, uh, one thing is that, you know, ICRA has recently upgraded our borrowing program from AA long term to AA plus, you know. Uh, so that is uh, on our borrowing part. So we think that the borrowing should be in the ballpark in this range only, uh, unless you know uh, there is some you know, good BD opportunity. Like now we are having uh, you know QIP money to be deployed. So post that deployment, we, we may see uh, a little bit uptake on the borrowing. Otherwise, you know, for a normal working capital, uh, you know, we don't require because the projects are self-funded. So the borrowing should stay in this ballpark, uh, other than uh, any BD requirement. Okay, and in terms of your outlook, in terms of the pricing, uh, so your uh, funding cost gone up by about 10 bips. Uh, so it has to be because I think the repo rate has gone up by 90 bips, and obviously the, you know, the interest rates are on rise. So you know you uh, you will also uh, see. Uh, slight uptake on the over borrowing cost, but obviously, you know, it will not be in linear to the, uh, you know, repo rate, uh, but yes, there will be, uh, you know, impact on, on the borrowing cost, you know, in the coming quarters, you know. Okay. In terms of the repricing uh, that would have happened, uh, what kind of impact uh, would already have come in and what do you expect? It's still in fact is already there you know like you know we were at uh, you know uh, 5.95 you know and now for the quarter we were at 6.04 so that impact of nine bits has already been there obviously going forward there will be you know uh, some impact obviously the cp markets uh, and the bank borrowing you know as the bank increases their rate you will see those impact but how much is that impact will you know uh, will be you know known in the coming days because there are certain instruments which we have logged in for some more time for a longer period so that impact would not be immediate but yes so gradually over the period of time there will be some impact but we would be i would be uh, saying that we like always we would be the best in the market okay thank you those are my questions thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of Manish Jain from Gormil One LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, I wanted to know about the Pune market, given that in the current quarter, despite any new launches, we have done sustaining sales of uh, more than 300 crore. And I see that seven uh, new phases planned for the current year. What is our plan for BD in Pune, given the kind of dominance we have acquired in such a short period of time? Yeah, we've we've got again, you know, some some interesting. We we've partnered um, with with you know as, as we did as you know we did six projects in partnership with Solitaire and Pune. We've built a solid partnership. We're looking at possibly scaling up that partnership. We have um, a deal in Pune also at a, at a relatively advanced stage that we're we, we're hopeful of announcing this quarter. So I think clearly. We we have scaled up well in Pune. I think it's been a, a strong journey there over the last 
uh, few years, and we, we want to build on that momentum. So, you know, across all four of these zones, I think business development is a significant focus. We have the appetite. We have the capital. I think there are interesting opportunities. So we, we hope to have good announcements uh, across all of these four zones. Perfect. Thanks. I'll join back with you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Alpesh Thakkar from Antique Stop Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking up my question and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, first of all, best wishes to Mohit for his future endeavors. Uh, my question is pertaining to you know FY23 launches. Uh, if you look at our target launch, almost 34% of launches are expected in Bangalore. Uh, however, we don't see uh, Bangalore contributing much this year. So are we seeing any, uh, some major spillover in terms of launches to next year, especially in Bangalore market? Well, again, I think the, the relative scale of each of these projects would also have to be looked at. But, but we do expect Bangalore to show very strong growth over, over last year. Um, so it's not that we're not expecting good, good numbers from Bangalore, but if you divide this 10,000 crore into sort of four parts, we think, uh, you know, zones like NCR and, and Mumbai are likely to do more than uh, 2,500 crore, and Bangalore probably would do a little bit less than that. But uh, we certainly do expect um, a solid performance in Bangalore this year. Thank you. 